Hey photographers! Here are those two new fast prime lenses Fujifilm announced a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the Fujinon XF23 f1.4 LMWR lens, and the Fujinon XF33 f1.4 LMWR lens. Uh, these are APS-C or crop lenses for Fujifilm's X mount cameras. Relative to full frame, that makes the 23mm equivalent to 35 and the 33 equivalent to 50. Those are standard focal lengths, suitable and useful for a wide range of general purpose photography. In look and feel, they pair nicely with Fujifilm's higher end cameras, this is the X-T4. And in general, they operate nicely, focus quickly, and provide the kinds of images these are mostly taken with the Astia film simulation that Fujifilm is famous for. Good contrast, rich color, excellent sharp detail. And I did also use the Acros black and white film simulation, as well as the classic negative. Uh, most of these images were taken with both chrome effects on, all straight out of camera. A few were adjusted in Lightroom from the RAW files. LM, in the name, indicates these lenses use a linear motor. That generally signifies they're fast and quiet. WR means they're weather resistant. Now their weight, at 360 and 375 grams respectively, is nearly identical. They're nearly the same height, 74 and 78. It's the 23 that's slightly taller and heavier. Filter diameter is 58 millimeters. Aperture can be set from f1.4 to f16 with a marked aperture ring. Uh, the ring clicks into detented positions at one-third stop increments. And the aperture rings have an A position, so you can set the aperture automatically. And so that you don't switch accidentally, press this key when accessing or leaving auto aperture mode. I think Fujifilm has it right this time. Now, both the aperture ring and the focus ring have grippy, ridged surfaces. That makes them easy to hold and turn. The focus ring has the right amount of friction, making adjustments smoothly and holding the set position. Now, they are focused by wire lenses, but the menu on the X-T4 and many other Fujifilm models has non-linear and linear options, making repeatable accuracy possible for those who'd wish to emulate Apple's cinematic mode rack focus trick manually. But of course, that's easiest when you use Fujifilm's touch focus capability. The 23mm field of view, which I find a more useful expression than full frame equivalence, is 63 degrees. And that's considered a standard lens, fairly similar to human vision in perspective. Closest focus is 19 centimeters, which means you can get this close. On the 33mm, the field of view is slightly tighter, 47 degrees, and the closest focus is 30 centimeters. Not quite as close. Even with the smaller field of view, the subject isn't as close up. Uh, 33 might be marginally better for portraits and the 23 marginally preferred for landscapes, but both perform well for all sorts of images. Uh, there is one physical difference, the lens hood. The 23 has the tulip configuration, the 33 is a straight barrel. I don't see any vignetting on these lenses and they are as sharp in the middle this is 200% as in the corners. Even fine detail is sharp and crisp, and I see no evidence of color fringing, again, even at the corners. At 200%, it's also obvious how incredibly shallow f1.4 is. The focus field is very small. The bokeh at the f1.4 aperture is so creamy and smooth, this is almost abstract. Prime lenses with large apertures are great choices for video, and both of these suit that description. This video was recorded with the 33 at f1.4, making my bookcase more defocused than usual. And although I usually use classic chrome, today I've used the subdued color and contrast of the Astia film simulation. There's one thing I'd love to have found on these lenses, a function key that can be assigned to AF on, or I autofocus next time. And just a tip, if you intend to run out and purchase these, the supply chain issues everyone is having 
also affect Fujifilm. Availability dates may be a moving target. Fujifilm told me the 23mm may not be in stores in Canada until February 2022. So as always, I'm happy to read and reply to your relevant questions and civil comments. If you like what I do, please use the subscribe button. The bell beside will notify you when I post a video. Although Fujifilm Canada did lend me the lenses and the camera, they did not pay me, nor did they review this video prior to posting. And you may have noticed that there were no ads to interrupt this video. I didn't stop to tell you something that someone paid me to say. So I'm very grateful to those of you who support this channel by being members and making that possible. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.